Hey guys, this is Mark coming to you from Thor. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to connect our newest modulator, the RF Petite, uh, to your computer using an Ethernet cable. This is the unit. So from our website, you just click on this first product here, and it's going to be this first unit. So this is a unit we're going to be discussing today. As you can see uh, on the front of the unit, there's an NMS port or the back of the unit. Uh, and this is a great way to connect to a laptop to operate our network management system. And this allows you to go through all the settings, change the address, uh, the channels, the RF modulation standard, all sorts of stuff. So essentially the same thing I'm going to be showing you today in the video is located down here in a PDF. Uh, very easy to read, very quick and simple. So if you click on it, this is going to be the short manual here. And as you can see, the unit is actually on a dot one subnet. Uh, dot 10. So this is actually the full subnet of the unit and this is what we need to connect to. So if you're trying to connect to the unit and you type this into your browser and you see an error message like this, uh, it probably means that you're not on the same subnet as a unit. Now here you can see that I put in a dot three just to show you what this error message looks like. Um, but if this is a dot one dot 10 and this is what you see, you're not on the same subnet. So we're going to go ahead and help you fix that. So again, going back to this uh, quick manual, this will show you step-by-step step going through the settings on how to get there, what to change, uh, and pretty much uh, get in contact with the modulator so you can control it from your desktop or laptop. Um, so again, we're gonna be showing you the petite. And what I wanna show you now is how to actually get there. So if you hit your Windows key and just type in something like network, you'll see this kind of uh, menu open up and I'm hardwired to my computer or to the network. So you're gonna click ethernet, change adapter options. You're gonna get to this connection, which I'm using. Properties, TCP IPv4, properties again. And if this screen is blank, that means you're probably using DHCP and you're not on the same subnet. So I'm gonna just show you how to do this quickly and efficiently is you're going to make a subnet here 192.168 and again the unit is on a dot one so we're going to start there and you're going to want to pick a number somewhere between uh you know i'd say 10 and 254 uh if most of your devices on your network are dhcp they usually use the lower ip addresses first so i'm just going to go ahead and pick 67. uh the subnet mask should auto populate 255 255 2550 as shown and the gateway again should be a high number. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use 254. And that's it. And hit OK. Now your computer will be on that dot one um, subnet that the unit is going to be on when you first get it. So going back. Now, if you go ahead and open up another browser tab and type that in, it should come right up. And here you can see that this is the GUI for our device. There's a link lock and it is encoding. And, you know, in here is where you can change a lot of the actual settings. And all this stuff you can manipulate, change the RF modulation uh, settings and whatnot. So this is the IP address of the unit. Uh, if you receive the unit, you have to jump on a dot one dot ten to log in, and then after the fact, you can change it to whatever you want. So let's say at your home or your office or, or bar or wherever you guys are using this equipment, you can make your own, let's say dot four dot fifty uh, subnet, and I'll show you exactly how that's going to look. Uh, if you want to change it again. So here we hit submit. Okay. And now we're going to go back to our network. And I'm going to show you how to add a second subnet. So you don't have to go through this whole situation again to usually would change this to a four. Um, and then I would be on the dot four subnet. But we're going to leave this for now, and I'm going to show you an advanced setting that you can click on. And up here uh, is where your computer is actually on. So I'm going to make a dot four. So here, four, and then we're going to make the unit, um, or our computer, we're going to just make 100. 
and this should be 255 across the board. So we're going to add this. Hit OK. And that's it. I just added the unit onto a dot four subnet after making uh, the unit switch to dot four. And as you can see here, a network change has been detected because I already changed the network parameters to dot four dot five zero. So again, now I can open up another browser and we're going to try and get that dot four and it should work. And there you go. So we're going to log in now user, user, and sign in. And there you go. And this is the same exact unit. And if you go back to the network parameters, you can see now that unit was changed from a dot one, dot one zero to whichever IP address I wanted to put it on. Uh, again, the standard login IP address is dot one dot zero. So you have to put your computer on a dot one first before you can change it to anything else. Um, and like, as I just showed you, it's Pretty quick, pretty easy. And again, if you're seeing an error message like this, if you put in an IP address uh, and it can't be reached, that means that you are not on the same subnet as the device. All right, guys, hopefully that helps you out. And if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to us, uh, sales at thorfiber.com, our 1-800 number. And feel free to reach out if you guys have any issues. Thanks.